Romans chapter 7. He says, verse 15, What I'm doing I don't understand. I'm not practicing what I'd like to do, but I'm doing the very thing I hate. Haven't we all had that experience where very often I want to do the right thing? I always want to do the right thing and I end up doing something which afterwards I say, boy, why in the world did I do that? I hate it. And yet I happen to do it. Why in the world did I say it like that? I didn't want to say it like that. I wanted to say it in a loving, gentle way, but I didn't turn out like that. I ended up saying or doing things which I hate. Well, <clears throat> if I acknowledge that I hate that, then I'm acknowledging, verse 16, that the law is good. So then I recognize that it's not me doing it, it's this sin in my flesh that's doing it because I haven't got rid of my flesh yet. And so verse 19, the good that I want, I don't do, but I practice the very evil that I hate. So I find this principle, verse 21, within me, and all of us will acknowledge this, that the one who wants to do good, I joyfully concur, verse 22, with the law of God in the inner man. Don't you? I believe you do. I believe you read the Bible and say, it's absolutely right, that's the way I want to live. But I find a different law in my members, which is making me a prisoner sometimes and making me do things which I don't want to do or which I regret as soon as I've done it, as regret as soon as I've said it. And it's from such a man that a cry comes out, oh, wretched man that I am. Now I want to tell you, to me, that's, that statement is one of the marks of the fact that a person is really born again. A person who's not born again can say something and do something and never say, oh, wretched man that I am, why in the world did I do that? Why in the world did I say it like that? If you never say it, never have that type of feeling, I want to say you're probably not born again at all. But if you had that feeling, oh, wretched person, why in the world did I do it like that? Why in the world did I respond like that? That is one of the clearest indications that you're born again. But that can be a burden where the devil fools you. You say, see, this proves that you're not saved. No, it proves that you are saved. Otherwise, you wouldn't feel like that at all. You're sensitive. It means you don't have leprosy. A pinprick, you feel it. People with leprosy, they don't feel anything. You can poke them with a nail, they won't feel it. But you're feeling a small thing. And the, the one mark of growth in the Lord is this, that even a small little thing, one word, makes you feel like that, oh, wretched man that I am. So, don't let that burden you. So he says, well, what am I going to do? <laughs> uh, I want to thank God through Jesus Christ because I realize that in my mind, verse 25, it's very important to understand this verse. In my mind, I've decided I'm going to serve the law of God wholeheartedly and that includes the Sermon on the Mount. I have decided in my life I want to be completely free from anger. I want to be completely free from lusting. I want to be completely free from any bitterness and com complaining against anybody in the world. I want to be totally free from hating those who have hurt me, from having an unforgiving spirit towards anybody in the world, from wishing evil towards any human being. I want to be completely free. And if I, some of these times the other thoughts come up, I'm going to reject them. Because in my flesh, verse 25, I'm still loving, serving the law of sin. So these other thoughts and feelings sometimes come up. So what shall I do then? Here my mind is determined to live for God. And these other things come up and then I get burdened. Oh, I'm such a rotten person. You should not be burdened. It says in the next verse, it's unfortunate that there's a chapter division between that and Romans 8 verse 1. You, your mind, you're serving God. And with your flesh, you're serving the law of sin. Fine. But there's no condemnation. You think there should be condemnation if your flesh is serving the law of sin? No. Therefore, therefore means because of the previous verse. Well, how in the world can there be no condemnation when I'm serving the law of sin with my flesh? Because with my mind, I'm serving the law of God. Because God sees that deep down in my mind, I only want to please Him. Do you feel like that? Then there'll be no condemnation. For you, you should not condemn yourself. A lot of burdens come through condemning yourself. That's why I want you to free you from condemnation. Free you from self-condemnation. I pray that every single person sitting here, 
if you are really born again and you love the Lord and you want to please Him, will never have condemnation, self-condemnation again for the rest of your life. I lived with a lot of self-condemnation for years after I was born again. And I thought I was being spiritual because I felt so condemned about it. But it hindered me from growing because in all those years I never got any victory over sin. And I'll tell you this, you will not get victory over sin if you keep on condemning yourself. You need to recognize that becoming like Christ is a matter of growth. It's not sudden. It's not that one day you're a sinner and the next day you're like Christ. You are not. There's a progression as you judge yourself. And all those years, your flesh will serve the law of sin. But your mind will serve the law of God. Your mind is set on pleasing God. And in a sense, you can say, that wasn't me. That was my flesh that made me do that. But I hate it. And one proof of it I hate it is I immediately confess it to God. That's one proof that you hate it. And if you hurt another person, you immediately go and ask forgiveness from that person. That's a proof that you hate it. A person who's not born again doesn't feel like that. He just continues, oh, well, I'm like that. You know, you can take this word like, well, my flesh will serve the law of sin and, and completely ignore all the wrong things you do. No. A person whose mind is set on the law of God will immediately confess his sin to God and immediately ask forgiveness from the one he's hurt, but he will not condemn himself. He'll say, verse Romans 8, 1, there is no condemnation because I'm in Christ and I'm not living after the flesh. I'm seeking to please the law of God. And if we live like this, free from condemnation, verse 1, which is very important, then you can go to verse 2, which is the law of this Holy Spirit. See, this is in contrast to the law of Moses. The law of Moses was a list of 613 commandments, which is there in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. But the law of the Spirit is not in written commandments. It says the law of the Spirit is a life. A life in Christ Jesus. That is this new law. A law of life. See, it's, uh, let me give you an example I've used very often. That is when people have leprosy, which is a picture of sin, even in Leviticus. It's a picture of sin throughout the Bible. One of the main things that happens in leprosy, there may be other things as well, is that they lose sensation. That part of your skin that's got leprosy, you can poke it to the nail, you don't feel a thing. Sensation has gone. And that's a picture of a conscience that is dead. And you don't feel anything. And if there was some way in which the leprosy could be healed, one thing would happen is you'd feel like, hey, feeling is coming back. That means I'm being healed. So that is the mark of leprosy being healed. So when you don't feel anything, it means you're dead. You can put a one-ton weight on a dead man, he doesn't feel a thing. But you can, you can feel a weight even if somebody puts five kilos on you. So it's a question of being alive. So the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus it's by the life in Christ Jesus that I live now, not by a bunch of rules. And, but I will not allow myself to be condemned. As I live by this law, I'm gradually becoming free from this other law of sin and death. And uh, now, verse 4, this requirement of the law will be fulfilled in us if we don't walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. And, and that means something very simple. It doesn't mean I'm perfect. It just means that when I feel the prompting of the spirit to confess something, to acknowledge something, to set right something, or to ask forgiveness from someone, I do it. That is walking according to the spirit. The spirit is prompting me to do it. Then, the, gradually, that perfect requirement of God's law will be fulfilled in us. So that's the big difference between Old Covenant and New Covenant, which we have spoken many times. In the Old Covenant, God just gave a commandment and said, do it. And for 1,500 years, Israel tried to do it, and they could not do it. And then Jesus came and said, learn from me. 
learn how I lived keeping the law entirely. It is not by struggling and struggling and condemning myself, no. He lived before his father in simple dependence on his father, acknowledging, Father, without you I can do nothing. I desire nothing on earth but to do your will, that's all. You got to start there. I mean, I believe one mark of being really born again is that you really want to do the will of God from now on for the rest of your life because you believe that no matter what plan you make for your life, it can never be better than God's plan. See, that's why we choose the will of God. Some people think, oh, it's I mean I've got to never do my own will, but do the will of God always. Sure, because that will is a million times better than one thing you can plan for yourself. Why shouldn't I choose it? Why shouldn't I choose something which is far better than what I can plan? If I can believe that God who sees the whole future has planned my life in such a perfect way because he knows all the pitfalls ahead and all the dangers and traps that Satan has for me. It's like this, you know, this in, when you choose to drive using Google Maps, uh, this Google system is in touch with the satellite, so it can even tell you, hey, there's a lot of traffic up there, don't go this way, take another way, which a little bit longer, but you'll reach quicker, because part of your road is blocked with traffic. You get that red, red space on your Google map saying that's not the way to go. So it's something like that, when the, Lord, the Holy Spirit will say, not that way, go this way, uh, it looks a bit longer and more difficult, but it's because the Lord sees there are problems for you along this way. I mean, so many people trust Google Maps so much that they blindly obey it, but they can't trust the Lord. Then the Lord will show you the way, and not this way, but this way. Why can't we trust Him? All of you who have implicitly obeyed Google Maps, well, why can't you trust the Holy Spirit when He tells you not this way, but this way? He, he sees the whole future, and He prompts you to go this way. This is the way God wants us to live the Christian life. So when Jesus said, learn from me, for I am humble, the primary mark of Jesus, one of the marks of Jesus' humility was he did not choose to run his own life. He lived moment by moment by the prompting of the Holy Spirit. The whole secret of the Christian life is to develop the habit of listening to the Holy Spirit. That's why they just could not have this life in the Old Testament because the Holy Spirit had not come. It's not because we are better than them. No. It's because now we have the Holy Spirit to prompt us and guide us. We don't have to make the blunders that Old Testament great saints made.